National Ocean Oceanic and Atmospheric Administration, commonly known as NOAA, says that the world is currently experiencing a major coral bleaching event. Coral bleaching occurs when corals become stressed and expel the algae living in their tissues, causing them to turn completely white. This marks the fourth worldwide coral bleaching event on record and the second in just the last 10 years. Derek Manzello is here to explain a little bit more what this all means for all of us. He's the coordinator of NOAA's Coral Reef Watch program. Thank you so much for joining us. Um, so talk to us about what the different causes of coral bleaching is and which of these ca are causing this one global uh, crisis. I understand, of course, one is a global warming. Correct. Well, corals can actually bleach in response to many different stressors. However, the large scale mass coral bleaching that we're seeing now occur simultaneously globally is unequivocally due to ocean warming and rising sea surface temperatures. Now, as the planet continues to warm, coral reefs have been called the canaries in the coal mine. And unfortunately, these canaries started dying 40 years ago, and this problem continues to increase and severity, frequency, and magnitude as each year goes by. You know, as a, as a diver, uh, I, I love the ocean, um, love exploring corals. I know that there are greater implications than just for sport. Can you talk to us about just how serious this is, what it means to, to fish populations and to other ecosystems? Well, coral reefs have immense importance. Um, you know, in the United States alone, it's estimated that coral reefs contribute about more than $3 billion to the U.S. economy uh, annually. Now, on a global scale, that number's in the trillions of dollars. Now, the importance of coral reefs is huge to humans. Now, first and foremost, corals are a natural living breakwater that attenuates more than 90% of the storm energy during events like hurricanes. Coral reefs are also really vital for the tourism injury industry. So places in the, you know, the Florida Keys and Hawaii, people travel to these places to scuba dive and fish on coral reefs. Now, coral reefs are so important to ocean health because they are the rainforests of the sea. What that means is they have the highest concentrations of biodiversity and numbers of animal and plant species of any ecosystem in the oceans. It's estimated that about one in four or 25% of every living thing in the ocean depends on coral reefs at some point in their life. So if we have a large scale degradation of coral reefs continue, like what we're seeing now, this quite literally threatens 25% of every living thing in the wow. world's oceans. That is a remarkably high uh, rate. So I understand that bleaching doesn't necessarily mean that the corals will die. Can you talk to us about you know, how perhaps the damage can be reversed and what can we do to stop uh, more coral bleaching? So it's really important that people realize that a bleached coral is not a dead coral. So if you're seeing a white coral, that means it's still alive. It still has a fighting chance. Now, for corals to recover, what they need is temperatures to cool off quickly and not say, stay super elevated for long periods of time. Now, corals can absolutely recover from bleaching events, but it's imperative that we continue to uh, focus on cutting edge science and state of the art restoration techniques like those championed by NOAA and its partners to ensure that certain species of coral are able to continue to contribute their key ecological services to U.S. coral reefs. Derek Manzello at NOAA, thank you so much. My pleasure, thank you.